Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to St. Peter's Lutheran Church. This Sunday is the 19th Sunday after Pentecost, and we are reminded in God's Word that no matter what station in life, we find contentment in the eternal riches which Christ purchased for us on the cross. Visitors, we're glad you are here with us today. Please fill out a guest card, place it in the offering plate later on during the service. All of the hymns will be taken out of the Lappy songbook. If you don't have one, raise your hand and the ushers will come and bring you one. Also tonight there's going to be a videographer here and during the hymns he may come down the side rows to get your lovely faces. So uh, don't be startled when you see him because this is going to be for an introduction to our congregation on the website. Let's uh, worship our God by singing hymn 126. Please stand. (laughs) 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Deeply aware of your sins and trusting only in the merits of Jesus for forgiveness, I ask you before God who searches your hearts, do you confess the sins you have committed in desire, thought, word, and deed? Do you heartily repent of your sins, believe in Jesus Christ alone for forgiveness, and sincerely intend, with the help of God the Holy Spirit, to amend your sinful life? If so, then answer, yes. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, announce God's grace unto you. And in the stead and by the command of the Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord by singing, Father, I adore you, hymn number 67. And we pray. Mercifully grant, O God, that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. For without your help, we are unable to please you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. We hear a lesson from the Old Testament written by wise King Solomon in Ecclesiastes chapter 5. The world loves, serves, and trusts in wealth, scheming to acquire it. God's people are content with how the Lord sees fit to bless their faithful labors. If you see the poor being oppressed, and you see the province being robbed of justice and fairness, do not be shocked about the situation, because one high official is watched by a higher one, and higher ones are over them. All officials take their cut of the profit from the land. Even the king benefits from the fields. Anyone who loves money never is never satisfied with money, and anyone who loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. This too is vanishing vapor. When goods increase, so do those who eat them. What profit then does the owner get, except to see these things with his eyes? The worker's sleep is sweet, whether he eats little or much. But a rich person's abundant possessions allow him no sleep. I have seen a sickening evil under the sun, wealth hoarded by its owner to his own harm, or wealth that is lost in a bad investment. Or a man fathers a son, but he has nothing left in his hand to give him. As he came out from his mother's womb, so he will go again, naked as he came. From his hard work he can pick up nothing, that he can carry away in his hand. This too is a sickening evil. Just as he came, 
so he will go. So what does he gain, he who works for the wind? Besides this, during all his days he eats in darkness with great frustration, sickness, and anger. So then, here is what I have seen to be good. It is beautiful to eat, to drink, and to look for good in all a person's hard work which he has done under the sun during the few days of his life that God has given him. For that is his reward. Likewise, for everyone to whom God has given wealth and riches, if God has also given him ability to eat from it, to enjoy his reward, and to rejoice in the results of his hard work, this is a gift from God. For a man seldom reflects on the days of his life, since God keeps him busy with the joy in his heart. This is the word of our God. We sing him 202. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is recorded in Luke chapter 16. Unbelievers who are materially rich are spiritually bankrupt. Believers may be materially poor and yet through faith in Christ are spiritually and eternally rich. Jesus said there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen, living in luxury every day. A beggar named Lazarus had been laid at his gate. Lazarus was covered with sores and longed to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Besides this, the dogs also came and licked his sores. Eventually the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In hell, where he was in torment, he lifted up his heads and saw Abraham, or lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far away and Lazarus at his side. He called out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, because I am in misery in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things and Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in misery. Besides all this, a great chasm has been set in place between us and you, so that those who want to cross from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's home, because I have five brothers to warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Abraham replied to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. This is the word of our God. Please sing the old rugged cross on page 226.
Please stand. Grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the sevenfold spirit before his throne and from Christ Jesus, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. Amen. We direct our attention to the revelation of St. John chapter 2. To the messenger of the church in Smyrna write, the first and the last who was dead and came to life again says this, I know your suffering and your poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy that comes from those who say they are Jews but are not. Rather, they are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear anything that you are about to suffer. Look, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison so that you will be tested and you will suffer for ten days. Be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life. Whoever has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. This is the word of our God. The congregation may be seated. Dear fellow children of the Heavenly Father, there are many things that people are afraid of. Some people are afraid of the dark. Some people are afraid of thunder and lightning. Some people are afraid of heights, and that's one of the reasons why they refuse to fly on an airplane. Some people are afraid of dogs and insects and snakes and even mice. I knew a lady who was terrified of traveling over a bridge. Some people are afraid to go to the dentist. Some people are afraid of clowns. There are some people who are terrified of contracting cancer or another terminal disease. Many old people, they're afraid that their money will run out before they die. Children are afraid of the boogeyman. And on many polls, the number one and number two things that people are afraid of are public speaking and death. You and I are prone to be afraid of many things because we are made of frail, sinful, human flesh and we feel like we are very vulnerable. But as we learn in God's Word for today, we have no reason to fear. Why not? Because first of all, we are rich in every circumstance. Secondly, we are strengthened in tribulation. And finally, one day, we will be crowned in eternity. The book of Revelation was written about 60 years after our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ ascended into heaven. It was written by the Apostle John, who most likely was the only apostle who died of a natural death rather than being executed because of his testimony about Jesus Christ, like all the other apostles were. But in spite of not being executed, he was still persecuted because of his testimony about Jesus, because of his gospel work, because he preached the good news of Jesus Christ. He was exiled on an island named Patmos, which was a barren chunk of rock out in the Aegean Sea about 50 miles to the west of Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey. While he was in exile on that island, he received this vision directly from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And in this vision, the Lord Jesus dictated to him seven different letters addressed to seven different pastors of seven different churches in seven different cities throughout Asia Minor. This is the second letter that was dictated to John, and it was addressed to the pastor 
in the church of Smyrna. Now, Smyrna was one of the leading Roman cities. It was a very wealthy city. It was the center for emperor worship in that area of the Roman Empire. And in spite of the fact that that city was so rich, the Christians who lived there lived in abject poverty. What brought about their poverty could have been a number of things. Maybe those Christians were just born into a lower social class. It wasn't unusual at that time for people to have their wealth confiscated because of their confession about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In addition, at times, Christians would have their businesses boycotted by unbelievers because of their faith in Jesus Christ, and this would cause their businesses to go belly up. Whatever the reason was, the Christians in Smyrna were living in financial dire straits. And when people live in financial difficulties, they begin to wonder if God really knows or cares or has the power to help them. But what did Jesus say? The first and the last who was dead and came to life again says this, I know your suffering and your poverty, but you are rich. Although they were surrounded by scarcity, they could be absolutely sure that God had not abandoned them. God knew what their situation was and God had the power to help them in their situation. Why? Because he is the first and the last. He is the eternal, almighty God who created the universe and who sustains all things by his powerful, almighty word. He is the God that never changes. He is the same yesterday and today and forever. And this eternal God showed his almighty power in his most magnificent work, and that was the work of destroying the power of the devil, of freeing you and me from our fear of death, and of releasing us and delivering us from everlasting death and damnation. And how did he carry out that most magnificent work? He cloaked himself in the womb in human flesh, in the womb of the Virgin Mary, by the power of the Holy Spirit. He's fully God, fully human, and one perfect person. And because of that, after a perfect life of obedience to the Heavenly Father's will, on the cross he could allow himself to be sacrificed for the sins of the whole world and die. But he didn't stay dead, did he? On the third day he showed that he is the King of kings and Lord of lords by his mighty resurrection from the dead. Because Jesus is the one who was dead and came back to life, no matter what your financial situation is in life, whether your bank account is bulging or your wallet is really thin, whether you are set for a comfortable retirement or you're going to have to work as a customer host at Walmart just to make ends meet, no matter what your situation in life is, you are rich because Jesus has already purchased for you the priceless treasures of heaven that can never be taken from you. As Jesus said, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so you have no reason to fear because the one who purchased the priceless gifts of heaven is also the Lord of all the earth who knows your situation that you are in and promises to provide you with everything that you need for your body and life. And that, my friends, is why you are rich in any and every circumstance. The Lord also promises to strengthen you in tribulation. 
The people in the city of Smyrna, those ancient Christians, they were being attacked. They were being attacked both spiritually and physically. As Jesus said, I know the blasphemy that comes from those who say they are Jews but are not. Rather, they are a synagogue of Satan. The Bible clearly says that the true Jews, the true descendants of Abraham, the father of the Jews, are not those who have Abraham's blood coursing through their veins. But the true Jews, the true descendants of Abraham, are those who have the faith of Abraham. Abraham believed God's promise that one day he would send a Savior from sin. Those who believe that Jesus the Christ is that Savior are the true Jews, are Abraham's children, members of God's church. How sad it is that the members in the church of Smyrna were being attacked by false teachers who were a synagogue of Satan, false teachers who served the devil himself. These false teachers blasphemed. These false teachers slandered the Christians in Smyrna and with their lies destroyed their reputation. And then this also brought about other persecution, attacks on their physical well-being. As Jesus said, do not fear anything that you are about to suffer. Look, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison so that you will be tested and you will suffer for 10 days, a short period set by God. In the early Christian church, many Christians were thrown into the dungeon because of their faith in Jesus, their priceless treasure. Many of them were physically persecuted and some of them were actually executed because of their faith. The Lord allowed these tribulations in their lives in order to test them, in order to give them an opportunity to testify to their faith in Jesus and to stand up for the truth of God's holy word, no matter what circumstance they found themselves in. Now, over 2,000 years later, the Christian church on earth continues to be attacked, both spiritually and in places physically. We don't realize it in the United States and the safety that God has blessed us with here. But did you know that around the world every hour there are 11 Christians that are killed because of their faith? That adds up to over 100,000 Christians slaughtered every year because of their faith. And yes, although they're physical life is taken from them by refusing to deny their Savior Jesus Christ, they gain eternal life. And that's why worse than any attack on our bodies is an attack on our souls through false teaching. The visible church on earth is loaded with all kinds of false teachers who are seeking to spread their lies as far and as wide as they can in the name of Jesus Christ, these false teachers reject the basic truths of the Bible. They reject the inerrancy of the Bible. They reject the miracles of the Bible. They reject the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. They reject the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. They deny that the Bible is objective truth. They reject what God says about marriage. It is astounding how far some visible churches have drifted away from the truth of God's Word. And these false prophets, they are a synagogue of Satan leading hundreds of thousands of souls into hell. And yet you and I do not have to fear any attacks on our bodies or our souls because the Lord, He strengthens us in tribulation, assuring us that when all is said and done, we will be crowned in eternity. What did Jesus say? Be faithful and until death, and I will give you the crown of life. Raise your hand if that was your confirmation verse. Be faithful to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. A number of you have that as your 
confirmation verse. It's a fitting confirmation verse, isn't it? It reminds us of the fact that there is no one or nothing in all of the universe that is worth rejecting Jesus for. There is nothing or no one in all of the world that has a rightful place in our hearts in front of Jesus Christ our Lord. And to be faithful to Jesus means to be faithful to His Word, to regularly study it at home, to regularly appear in God's house and have our faith strengthened as we confess our sins and receive absolution, as we hear the good news, the Spirit-filled Word of God proclaimed in its truth and purity, as we come to the Lord's Holy Supper and receive His true body and blood in with and under the bread and wine of Holy Communion for the forgiveness of sins. As we do those things, we will remain in the faith. The Lord Jesus tells us this, when it comes to Jesus, when it comes to His Holy Word, He wants us to perk up our ears. He says, whoever has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who is victorious will not be heard at all by the second death. What's the second death? Well, if there's a second death, there must be a first death. The first death is the death that is common to all mankind. Every human being, unless Judgment Day comes first, will suffer the first death, and that is the death of body, the separation of body and soul. But only unbelievers will suffer the second death. And the second death is death of both body and soul, in the fires of hell forever and ever. You and I do not need to fear the second death. Because with God's help, with the help of God the Holy Spirit, as we remain faithful to Jesus and His Holy Word, eventually we will be victorious and we will be crowned with the victory crown of life. We will be crowned in eternity with that crown of eternal life. Therefore, brothers and sisters, you have no reason to fear. No matter what this world throws at you, you can be sure that you are rich in every circumstance, that you will be strengthened in all tribulations, and one day ultimately you will be crowned in eternity. All for Jesus' sake. Amen. Please stand. And the God of peace himself will soon crush Satan under your feet. The Lord be with all of you. Amen. We sing, Jesus lead me day by day on page 157.
We continue to give glory to Jesus by offering up to him a rich and generous percentage of all that he so graciously and bountifully bestows upon us. The congregation may be seated. Please open your hymnals to page 42, page 42 in the front of the hymnal, so that we can offer up the responsive prayer of the church on page 42. The congregation may stand. Lord God, our maker and preserver, we praise and thank you for all that you give us day after day. We are not worthy of all the mercies you show us. You have given us your precious word to nourish our souls and to protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. We thank you for those who teach and preach your saving truth in this place and everywhere. Grant them a rich measure of patience, wisdom, and love. Heavenly Father, we pray that you shield us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, tears of crime, and the pain of disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Heal those who are sick, cheer those who are sad, Calm those who are distressed, and comfort all who are old and infirm. Bless our land, our people, and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations, that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, 
security, and well-being. Grant your blessing to every nation on earth. Where there are wars, may there be peace. Where there is hatred, let it be healed. Where there is poverty, danger, or disaster, come with your almighty power to help and restore. We bring these requests before you in the name of Jesus, our Lord, and ask you to hear us. Take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. We give ourselves to you that we may serve you in whatever way is pleasing in your sight. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. The congregation may be seated for the distribution. We'll sing the next three hymns during that time.
We'll close with the closing collect. And before we offer up that prayer, we'll also offer up a prayer on behalf of our brother in the faith, Nathan Crewald, who will be undergoing a double knee replacement surgery on Monday. Please stand. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, you are the great physician of both body and soul. We commend Nathan Crewald into your care as he undergoes surgery. We pray that you would grant success to the surgery and bring about a full and speedy recovery. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. May the power of the Lord Jesus make us strong to do his will. May the peace of the Lord Jesus fill our lives. Amen. Please be seated for the closing hymn. On November 8th and 9th, we still need housing for 18 more people. We have a lot of hosts to help us, but if you can host two, four, six kids, we have 18 more we have to host on November 8th and 9th. That's a Friday and a Saturday night. 
to house them and feed them in the morning and get them to where they need to be. So if you can do that, please help us out so we don't leave any kids out in the cold. All of the announcements are in your announcement sheets. There's calendars, wall calendars, pocket calendars available. Packers and pizza also available. Please take advantage of that. And script available for purchase. As the ushers greet you, they're not going to greet you because Tom is going to come and talk to us. Tom Dybert. Sorry. Forgot. Good thing you're there. Also, one note about the pizza sale, you have two more weeks. There's this Sunday and next Sunday is the final weeks of the pizza sale. So if you'd like some, make sure you get your orders in. And Pastor Guzzi would love nothing more than to have to make 2,000 pizzas. I just wrap them. I just <laughs> <laughs> this is Tom Dybert. He's on our outreach committee. Hold that close. Well, there goes the first paragraph of my speech. Um, no, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tom Dybert, and for those of you who do know me, my name is still Tom Dybert. Um, I grew up with faithful parents. I was baptized at Trinity Lutheran in Kiel, and when it came time to go to school, they saw to it that I had a Christian education at Peace Lutheran in Green Lake where I was confirmed and after confirmation it was time for high school so it was on to WLA and I spent four years at WLA and graduated not with such high honors but I graduated so why am I telling you all this well like most of you I have known the love of Jesus my entire life but we all know somebody. We either work with them, or there are neighbors, or friends, or even some family members who don't know the love of Jesus. And we have plenty of opportunities to share with them our knowledge of Jesus. I myself work with a young man who has no knowledge of Jesus, and him and I have had some interesting conversations. He believes that religion is a cult, and I keep telling him, no, it's not. Um, it's not up to me. It's up to the Holy Spirit to work faith in his heart. All I can do is share with him the love of Jesus. Our, uh, with that in mind, our next special service for the um, friends and family service will be a Veterans Day service on November 10th. And I believe the St. Peter's Friends and Family Band will be kicking off their world tour that day here at St. Peter's. Um, if you know a veteran, what a, what a great way to thank them for their service than to invite them to church that Sunday or even Thursday night beforehand, um, to thank them for their service and to share the love of Jesus with them. Um, there will be refreshments served between or after each service, and you know, just it doesn't have to be a veteran. Anybody you know that doesn't know Jesus, invite them to church that Sunday or any Sunday or any Thursday night. And that's all I have to say. So thank you. So now, as the ushers greet you with a handshake, say hello to those around you, introduce yourself to those you don't know, and feel free to visit with one another. And Nathan, it was knees, right? Not hips. Knees. Okay. Too young for hips yet. So have a blessed week.